Okay, let's have a look at pie charts. So one thing you need to remember with pie charts is that they have 360 degrees in them. So look, I'm not going to draw um, draw out the pie chart, uh, but I'll help you work out how you would do it. And the first thing I'm going to do is just split this up um, just to show you. Okay, so if I split this up into quarters, you know, I know I've got 360 degrees in total. Just remember that each quarter has got 90 degrees, and that's really helpful for you know, kind of estimating how things would look and you know all the rest of it. So, you know, a half then, you know, the, this half here would be 180. Likewise, if I split a quarter into two, yeah, that would be 45 degrees, half of 90. Okay. So if you remember those numbers, that's pretty helpful. Okay. And the other thing to remember is that well, 360 that's equal to one you know, pizza, one pie, we're going to call it. 180 degrees is then equal to a half, because I've just divided that by two. 90 degrees would be equal to a quarter. 45 degrees would be equal to an eighth. So if you try and, try and link the degrees with the fractions in your head as well. Okay, so that's a, that's a quick rundown of how we're starting. Let's have a look at the question. So Stuart's got a monthly bill. Okay, not bad, doesn't live in London. Construct a pie chart for the following information. So what we're doing there, if, if you think of um, a, a part of this um, of this pie chart, I said that 180 was a half. Now the other way I could think on that is that that's the same as 180 divided by 360. This is the same as 90 divided by 360. That's the same as 45 divided by 360. And if you simplify those fractions, simplify this, you end up with these simplified fractions, okay? But any part of a circle or pie, whatever, is the angle divided by 360, okay? So if you remember that your total is 360 degrees and that a part is gonna be your angle that you have over 360 degrees, all right? So let's have a think then. What's, what's Stuart's total amount of money? Okay, so his total amount is gonna be 660, plus 450, plus 90. So what's that gonna be? Nine, nine, six, and five, and 20, and 10 and 12, okay. So his total amount is that. So that means for his rent, and his food, and his savings, okay, he's spending 660 out of that amount, for his food, he's spending 450 out of that amount. And for his savings, he's spending 90 out of that amount. Now, we're trying to get to a situation where we've got out of 360. That'd be quite good. If it was something at 360, I could just draw the amount. That'd be great. In the same way, if it's something out of 100, I know the percentage. But I don't think this number is going to give me a nice number here. So what we're going to do is simplify and see what fractions we've got. And then we'll see if maybe we can get a fraction um, that relates to this. So cancel my zeros. 66 out of 120. So we should spot that that divides by 6. So that's 11 out of 20. That's as far as that's going. Again, cancel the zeros. 45 out of 120, we should spot that that divides by 5, so that would be 9 out of, what would that be, 24? And for this one, in fact that still was further because I can divide that by 3, so that would be 3 out of 8. Good, and this one, get rid of the zeros, 9 out of 120, I can divide by 9. Um, I'll divide by 3 first of all, so 3, um, but yeah, divide by 3, 3 over 40, and that's as far as that's going. So I've got my percent, I've got my fractions, and now I'm thinking, well, I would really like some similar fractions so that I can kind of draw these up, because right now I was, I was hoping they would all come out quite similar, but let's let's think, how can I make them similar? And to do that, we're, we're talking actually about fractions. We're trying to get up the lowest common multiple for each of these. So the lowest common multiple is basically saying, well, what times table do they all meet on? So if I do the twenty, the forty times table, it'd be forty, eighty, one hundred and twenty. The twenty times table is twenty, forty, sixty. So right, forty is looking quite good. 
I'm about 8, I do the 8 times table, 8, 16, 24, 32 and 40, very good, so they all are in the 40 times table, brilliant. So this one, if I just times them by 2, I get 22 out of 40, brilliant. This one has to times it by 5, so 5 times 3 is 15 out of 40, excellent. And this one's already like that. So there we go, we're getting there, we're making progress. So again, I was hoping for quite a nice fraction, then I was thinking, well, that we, could, we could compare, we could, you know, if we get a nice intense or something like that, or whatever, maybe they're good, or the numbers might just come out nice, and they're still not very nice, so I think our only option is to then still try and aim for this out of 360. Um, so 360, how do I get from 40 to 360? Well, I times it by 9. So I'm going to do 22 multiplied by 9. So you've got to be chimney sum for that. And you'll end up with 198. So you've got 198 degrees. How do I get from that? Ah, still times in that by 9. So 15 times 9, that'd be 135 degrees. There'll be chimney sum. And this one times that by 9. 9 times 3, 27. And then you would just use your protractor to draw them. So look, that was quite a big question, you know. Um, and actually more of a fraction question than a pie chart question, really. But with this one, your strategy should be thinking you're wanting to get it out of 360 or some nice fractions like this that you know how to draw because you know a half has got 90 degrees. You know an eighth has got 45 degrees. So I thought maybe we were going to get into that kind of situation where it was, you know, three eighths and two or but it didn't work that way. So, yeah, um, in this case, we were trying to get to, to 360. So we boiled it down as far as we could, and then we were multiplying up to get to, to get to 360. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd just show you my, my thought process going through that. Sometimes when you're in these questions, you're kind of navigating through what, you know different, different ideas. Um, so yeah, maybe you'll get nice fractions, but if you don't, you'll have to make sure it's out of 360, so you've got a nice, um, so you've got your answer. That's your that's your answer for each of the portions. Make sure you label the angle and the name on them, and yeah, um, simplify it down as far as it goes, and then multiply up the three hundred and sixty. You're going to be looking for something. You're, going to be, you're in the nine times table. You're in this. You know the six times table, three times table. So you're looking for multiples like that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, look, I hope that's helpful. Quite a big question, um, but yeah, three hundred and sixty degrees in a circle. Think of your fractions. And angle, I'll just write that at the top actually. It's your kind of um, angle out of 360. That's the ratio in your triangle. And in this case, that was the, you know, the kind of the portion of the amount you were looking at, like the portion over the total. And that could be in any kind of setting. All right, so that's question one. Hope that was good.